Hello, Revere, and let me welcome you to another nice show of the Revere Veterans and Community with my great speaker and my guest, who's head of the Revere Veterans Services, yes, Mark sir. Silvestri. Good morning, Mark, Morris. Thank you for coming. Thank you for okay. having me. It's always a pleasure. Right. You have a lot of things to discuss this one, so why don't you take <coughs> off? Okay. Um, well, first, I, I think we have a happy birthday of uh, one of your good friends. Oh, yeah. I would like to say happy birthday to Judge Lathan at the Brockton VA, who's going to just turned 105 years old and going on 106. Judge, happy birthday, and I hope you live to be 206. Take care. Happy birthday, Judge. Um, so, yeah, Morris, it's, it's been a, a busy time of year for us. We just finished our reprocessing for Chapter 115 clients, uh, which is a benefit for um, low-income veterans in the city. Um, and Excuse it, me, can you expand on that when you say uh, uh, low-income veterans for the city? Exactly what does it do? Yes, it, it, takes, a, um, it takes a calculation between their income and their rent, and if they pay a heating, they get a heating allowance um, put into their payments. Oh, uh, I see. It also covers their medical um, moving forward. So any um, re like co-pays on payments for a doctor's office or a dentist's office or anything like that, we can either set up them with a direct pay um, where we handle it they never have to pay touch a dollar. It gets sent. The bill gets sent from the doctor's office directly to us, and we reimburse the doctors. Or they can pay, fill out a W-9 when they sign up for the program, and then we re reimburse them directly. Uh, it's a great program. Um, and they, they contact you, Mark. They can contact our office, set up an appointment. Uh, they need to bring in um, three months bank statements, current. Uh, they, if they have any awards like Social Security, uh, a veteran's benefit, a, even a part-time job, Mars, they can still qualify. If their income is less than, well, approximately, approximately between 15 and 2,000, depending on what their rent is, though. Because if their rents are low, like two, three hundred dollars, and and they're making 15, they wouldn't qualify. They would qualify what's called medical only. We could actually do a whole show on Chapter 115, but they could qualify for what's called medical only, and then we would be um, we would reimburse on their co-payments and stuff in, in their medical part. Um, some veterans get just that medical piece; others get uh, a check, uh, a financial check, with the medical coverage, um, and and that's for lower income veterans. Um, so that's that was our reprocess. Uh, that's our processing um, in our recertification. It starts the second week of December, and we need to have it finished by the second week of January. Uh, so you know, with Christmas and uh, New Year's, there's a lot of holidays that fall in between that time frame. That makes it a, a very uh, daunting task to get that complete. Excuse me. Here's this gentleman. Who do I call if I wanted to find out? What num telephone number would you give them to call? They would call 781-286-8119, and that's the Veteran Service Office here in Revere. Either myself or Donna Driesen will answer. You can set up an appointment. Um, Chapter 115, because of the length of time, Mars, is appointment only. Um, and, and we go from there. That's the only one I got. Next, uh, can okay. tell you. Um, I'd also like to give a, a special thanks, Morris, and maybe a, a, a heads up for the people of the city that don't know uh, yet. I'd like to thank our city council. Um, they actually approved a, um, a revolving account for the Veterans Office, uh, which means I can now accept donations in the name of Revere Veterans Office and use that towards emergency situations, help fund the wheelchair program we run, help fund the, the food program and Operation stuff like Operation Troop that. Support? Op well, that, that's another thing that you can donate to separate, but oh. now they, they've never before had the ability to donate directly to the Veteran Service Office, and our city council uh, just approved uh, about a month ago, um, I went before them and they approved me to get a, a revolving account right. uh, that to accept donations 
and, and I, I'm very much appreciative of it. I have a good question for you, and that's a good question too. Paul Monty, who was head of down and born to raise flags, now that you got that approval, does that mean that you can donate to the flags too if you wanted to? Absolutely. If Paul, if Paul needs a, a flag donation, absolutely. Anything for the Monty family. Um, oh. they're, they're a gold star family in Massachusetts. Right. They were our Memorial Day keynote speaker this yep. year, uh, last year. Um, and, um, you know, yep. a absolutely. Uh, and his I'm son was forward. a Congressional Medal of Honor recipient. Absolutely. His, his right. son... Um, Jared is yeah. is you know he he literally was like a a, a folklore when we right. all got into Afghanistan you know everyone right. knew whether you knew him prior or not you heard about the Jared Monty story right um and and that's a special tribute to not only the son but the dad for instilling those well his dad is a great man great i know man. him personally he came to visit the veterans, not only me, he happened to stop by me at the hospital because I happened to be there, but he didn't come to see me. He didn't even know I was there. He's walking around the rooms and he happens to spot yours truly. And he asked me what I was doing there. We <laughs> actually, I didn't speak to him too much after that. You were still in the hospital with your foot issue and, right. and um, I actually spoke to him during that time and he did mention that to me. Oh, he did? He actually <laughs> brought me in a... Um, <laughs> a thing from the VA that they did a story on you. Yep. Yeah. Had a pretty good joke of yours in there, too. I don't tell jokes. It's not my thing. I nature. know, I know. <laughs> um, but I'd also like to uh, discuss a little bit about the Rumney Marsh Burial Ground uh, Restoration Committee. Um, th there's a, a pretty good list, but um, Jeff Perlman. Yep. Bill Reedy, Ivan Novoselsky, Brendan O'Brien, Tom Sullivan, Nick and Marie Jacoby. Um, Lorna Frangillo, Lenny Piazza, El Baker, Dimple Rana, myself. Uh, if, if I'm missing anyone, uh, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head, I apologize. But uh, we're, we got together and we all applied and put in our, our own voice through uh, um, writing and, and, and um, asked for a grant. And what that grant's going to do, it's going to be able, to, it's going to give us the ability to restore 44 of the gravestones in the Rumney Marsh well, burial ground. That'll be great. Uh, it would be great because I don't know if it's been done since I was a kid, but I remember as a kid running through that burial ground and and seeing the the condition of the stones. So that was over 20 years ago. I can only imagine what those stones look like today. So this is actually a proud moment, and and it's a, it's actually an a testament to the work that the gentlemen like Jeff Perlman, Bill Reedy, uh, Tom Sullivan, the Jacobis, you know, they put into this and, and they really, um, they really care about that burial ground. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be part of the next generation to be able to take that over and, and carry on the tradition um, to, to, to keep that burial ground up in, in a treasure of Revere. I'd like to say one thing to you, if I may. For the veterans out there, I don't know if you heard it or I heard it, that Walmart was going to hire 20,000 veterans by the year 2020 to put them to work. These are veterans who served in the military who are discharged honorably. Absolutely. Honorable discharge. So if you're a veteran and you're honorably discharged and looking for a job, feel free to contact Walmart. I'm sure they'd love to have you. Well, if you're a veteran and you're looking for a job and it's prior to... Um Walmart or, or you're a local veteran, you can also reach out to my office again, 781-286-8119. And uh, we actually are running a job program and we have a few local companies that are actually looking to put veterans to work. And uh, they, they, as long as the veteran fits what they need, they're more than willing to, to help the vets of our city. Uh, uh, there are there any age limit that a veteran could go to work? I mean, is there any age limit on as it? As long as he can serve. And as long as he can still work, yep. absolutely. There's no age limit, um, you know, depending on which benefits they're on, of course, and whatnot. Um, uh, another exciting um, thing coming up here, I just got back from the MVO, MVOSA which is the Mass Veteran Service Officers Association. Right. Um, we do uh, two, twice a year. We do our um, conference. We do a winter and a summer conference. 
um, this year at our winter conference that just happened last week. We had um, groups come in uh, t to about service dogs. We had um, this is a needs program. They don't they de they have a veteran service dog uh, portion of their company, but needs is anyone that is disabled that uh, a use of a dog may help them. And, and they train the dogs. The dogs are actually trained in our, our local uh, prison facilities. And, and the, the inmates, they do such an, an unbelievable job with these dogs training them um, that, you know, it, it's, it's a blessing to have that program in our, st in our state. And, and it's a blessing that, that companies like this, um, there's Pets for Vets, uh, th there's a list of them that, that do this. Um, type of work. I can vouch for that because when I was in the hospital in Brockton and Jamaica Plain by the way people would bring in dogs and bring them along to the vets in the rooms for the vets to pet them. Pet them. And uh, they brought a dog in my room I petted it and I left it and one of the nurses said to me you shouldn't have brought a dog in for Morris you should have brought a dog in <laughs> 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 yeah, if you know where I'm going with I that. do. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I actually also up at the, uh, the conference, uh, a group called in um, was a Veterans Homestead. Yep. And what they did was they broke down a list of uh, live-in facilities in different states. Um, there's a, a place in Armstead. Um, it's it's called Armstice Homestead. It's located right outside of Lemonster, Mass. It provides a welcome environment for 16 male veterans. They specialize, but not limited to, housing uh, more medically fragile veterans. Uh, but again, they're not limited to that. There's 24-hour care on the site. They take quality care of the veterans and, and give them a, 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 a life worth, um, you know, continuing to live in, in, in good uh, means. Speaking um, strictly for the city of Revere, Mark, do we have any homeless veterans that do not have homes or they're all pretty well off? I mean with homes, well, uh, uh, apartments. We, we, we do have a, uh, a population of veterans that are in need of housing. That are homeless? Um, the, I mean none of them have slept in the street during the winter when we've had these cold weathers, I hope. No, uh, they, they're by law. Uh, the VA shelters have to open the doors to everyone when the weather gets to be like this. But uh, in the summer, uh, Morris, it's sad, uh, a lot of times they, they do find themselves in the streets. Right. And it's not a lot of times that the help or the support's not there. They want to be in the streets. They street. sometimes choose to I, be. I, um, I met a couple. But in, in here, like, if you had a, a veteran suffering with substance abuse or anything like that, um, there's another, it's, it's a private residential program. It's called the Hero Homestead. It's 15 beds. Again, it's a male only substance abuse facility. They actually work and live at the program. Um, teaches them more or less, it's like basic training Morris. They break these guys back right down to day one and try to rebuild them from making their beds to finding a job eventually to, you know, getting back and living in the quality of life that, that they deserve to be living in. And, and, um, Sometimes it's, it's, it's sad to see that the vets get left behind um, and other, um, and, then, and then there's like, you see like there's a, a, so much available to veterans that sometimes you say, wait, how, how is there, these guys still falling through the cracks? But it happens um, and, it, and it's sad and that's why there's a veteran service officer in every city in Massachusetts. Right. And I'd like to ask you this question, Mark. If people would like to donate to the, the, their veteran services, what could they give for veterans that would be useful? Well, we do take um, stuff like toothbrushes, toothpaste, um, bags of coffee. Uh, Non-perishables. Non-perishables, right. um, if they're not too heavy, because the heavier the box, the more of a cost it costs. That stuff we take and we ship to Operation Troop Support. Operation Troop Support then sends it down range. I actually just got a really emotional card from Afghanistan of a Sergeant First Class thanking us because our packages that we sent from here in Revere made it to his combat outpost on the Pakistani border, and, and that was the first 
block his packages from outside of, uh, of Afghanistan that they've received in four months since they've been in our country. Um, and, and it was, it was, it was, it was uh, pretty little gut-wrenching and, and you know, brought tears to my eyes that this gentleman who's on the front lines of combat found it uh, nice enough to, to take time out of his day where he's in control of the lives of soldiers out in the battle um, to, to write a letter back to Revere thanking us for the things that we had sent out to them, and, and that was pretty special. That's what's nice. Yeah. That was real nice. Um, and th so they can do that. Any non-perishables, any toiletries they can bring to the office. And also, like I said before, if they want to donate anything, $5, $10, $2, if that's all they can bring down, they can bring whatever they want and bring it to the veteran service office and make a donation. And now we have the ability to keep it for our veterans here in the city. Before we didn't. And, and that's, uh, again, a testament to the city council approving that. We have a great veteran here who doesn't get as much notice as they really should. And he's head of the Wonder World Warrior, Andy Biggs. And Andy Biggs does a lot for the Wonder World Warrior. Amazing. Visit. And I would like to thank him. Yeah. Andy's a great friend of mine. Um, oh, you know him personally? Oh, I do. And uh, every year um, uh, I, I try to take place in as many of his events as he has throughout the year. Actually, this year I was um, away on a, a conference when he had his uh, uh, cabin fever event. Oh. And um, they, I think they raised that night over $40,000 in that one night of that one event. And they do auctions, and it's, it's a room packed full of veterans, and it's, it's, it's welcoming, it's warm, it's, it's, it's a great night to experience if you haven't yet. Um, maybe next year you can get there. But even the ride is unbelievable. Um, and, and the city's been cooperative. Um, the mayors continue to support it, and, and the mayor, I, I can say nothing about his administration, that uh, he's yet to deny one veteran benefit that I've asked for, and that's that's. Uh, well, we've had some great mayors so. here that have helped the veterans tremendously, and I can't think of anyone that didn't, really, right. and I've been here almost... 72 years. Oh, I've only been here once, so I can only attest to one mayor, but I know that they've many before him, yep. and, and he's continued on the tradition of, of uh, providing great service for our veterans. That's great. Yeah. Now, if a veteran, we talked about non-perishable goods. Suppose a veteran is wearing apparels. What can people donate in that? Now, as far as clothing? Yeah. I'd, I'd uh, like male or female. It don't make any difference. It don't make a difference. No, and I, and and I do accept clothing. Oh, you do? I do. I'd like to keep it as uh, new as possible. Um, sometimes people do a little spring cleaning. They'll call and say, "Can you accept some clothes?" And I say, "Yes." And the next thing you know, I got a bag full of the stuff that they weren't willing to wear and they wanted to throw away. And I don't. I take that stuff. And, and I bring it somewhere else because I'm not going to give. If I'm not willing to put it on, I don't expect you to be putting it on. And I don't care what spot you're in in life. You right. Know? Mark, I have to tell you this. I'm sure you've seen this on TV. There's a certain place on TV where the woman or men can get clothes that have been used, but they're cleaned, pressed, and neat. Have you seen that commercial? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I if they can do it, I'm sure the veterans can do it. Absolutely. And actually, currently right now, if we have any veterans in the city that need uh, suits for job interviews or a uh, resume builder, anything like that, again, come down to the office, make an appointment, call the office, 781-286-8119. Uh, we have suits. We have the ability to help you build a resume. Um, actually, right now, Morris, we have a good working relationship with the unions of Massachusetts, the, 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 all of them, laborers, the electricians, work. plumbers. Um, and, the iron workers. And, and iron workers, and they're all doing a big hiring this spring oh. um, for veterans, and they're specifically targeting veterans in this, in this hiring. So if you're a veteran and you, you're um, interested in working a trade, and, and you'd like to think about getting into the union, again, come down and see me. Uh, we, we have great programs that will work in Morris, and I, I try to keep building on them um, as we go. And uh, it, it's, it's right now working out between our, our wheelchair program, which has been a success, our job program, which has been a success. Um, and I'm actually proud to say that from February 15th 
2017 to up to date, uh, the city of Revere's veterans have received over $145,000 from the Veterans Affairs um, in filings, in back pays that they've earned, um, that we've uh, applied for for them. Another good thing that the Veterans Services does, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I mentioned to you earlier about the amputee. Mm -hmm. They gave him a wheelchair, but they also gave him, I don't know what you call those things that you can ride on the streets. What do you call those? An electric wheelchair. An ele what is it? Electric scooter wheelchair. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, do they still do that? I mean, I know the VA, the main VA does it. Well, what about the locals like you yourself? I actually took over the mobile wheelchair program from a, a retired VSO, Jerry McGuire. He, um, he retired, he asked me when I started if I'd take over the wheelchair program. And I run on a mobile wheelchair, they're electric wheelchairs. I have about seven. Oh, you rent them out? I don't rent them, I give them out. As long as you can give me a doctor's note that oh. shows you need one. And that your house has the ability to, you know. Roam around, roam around it. it uh, I can set you up with a wheelchair. Right now we have five on hand. We got the battery charges for them. Few we need to order batteries for and have them replaced because the batteries are, uh, are no good. But we take all on donation and we donate them right back out. This is, we, we, there's no money exchanged or anything. That's why I wanted to open up this veterans uh, revolving account. So I had funds to be able to pay for the, actually, um, the storage unit right on the Malden Revere line there by Harley Davidson. Um, it has been unbelievable. They've, they've given me a storage unit for one year free to store all the wheelchairs, the chargers, the ramp, everything um, that I need to transport these chairs back and forth. And uh, I, I have to thank them for that. It's, that was amazing. I asked them for a couple months until I got, was able to get the revolving account set up. And the owner was more than happy to give me a year to be able to get it set up. And, and um, it's greatly appreciated. You know what I would like to see every veteran get? And I know it may sound facetious, but it's good. They have these things that you call the 911 alerts. And if a veteran is injured or something, they wear it around their neck. Yep. Or a veteran who's a sing an old veteran, and most of them like have dementia or Alzheimer's, they should have one of those things that you can, like the GPS system, yeah. so you can find people like that. Do they have things for that? I'm actually, actually in the process right now oh, of good. trying to track that down because I have a veteran in the city that's actually requested one uh, tracking what, system. Yeah, the G, is that the GPS? The GPS. Yep. Um, but I actually... Guidance, have, what, what, excuse me, what does GPS... I know it stands for guidance system. I don't know what the P stands for. I, <laughs> Help me somebody out there. I, I couldn't... I, you slip in my mind. Uh, you, I wish you asked me before so I could have been prepared for that more. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I actually, again, at the conference, they have now um, phones that if you have one of those devices, you know, the, the device you can press Plus that you fall. 911, yeah. Right, and they have little speakers on them, okay? Oh, now, you can't talk with them? They have, I have a group I, I connected with at the conference. They're willing to come in. They're willing to set up models in my office for people to come down and, and experiment with, and it's for hearing disabled veterans and um, they can come in and they have phones in their home. That's and th if they can't hear, if they're so hard of hearing that they can't hear, it comes across the screen. Whatever the person's talking to you on the other oh, line. Oh, just like the Google computers. Just like the computer. So if right. you're watching the screen, you're reading what yeah. the person's saying. And then you just respond back to this the re thing. Or if you are so immobile that you can't hold the phone, you, you can actually hear and speak right into that box around your neck. And it, it's amazing. I thought it was great. So I have actually um, the woman who runs that program coming in. She's going to set up a couple uh, samples or, or, or models. And so the, when the vets come into the office, if they have that need, they can try that out and see which one they like or prefer to use. I'd like to mention one more, if I may. We have a gentleman in Revere who is a non-veteran, but he does more for veterans than some of the veterans do for veterans. His name is Al Terminello Jr. He mentioned to me that if a veteran or even a senior citizen, he have phones that 
you can, like if I'm talking on the phone, the conversation, if I'm deaf and I have no hearing aid on me, the conversation will be printed out right on the phone. Exactly what I'm talking about. Is that what you Exactly what I'm okay. talking about. Yeah. I thought that's what you meant. <clears throat> yes, yes. Okay, so those are, those are the same thing. And Al is, Al is great. He's, 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 uh, he's always there for the veterans when you need him. Well, him and, and uh, uh, my counselor, Aaron Avnoselsky, they work together on that. Yes, the, 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 and, and they do their due diligence to help yep. the veterans of the city. Yep, I was a veteran of 20 some odd years, and Al is a community veteran. I don't know how old he is, but as long as every, I guess from the day one to now. <laughs> it's, 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 it's still service in my eyes, whether you put on the uniform, uh, not, or whether I agree you with turn you. around and you, you give to veterans and you help veterans on a right. daily basis, you're, you're still continuing to serve in, right. in my eyes, you know. Well, we've got about three minutes left, so why don't you take a couple of minutes to wrap it up? Okay, again, if any veteran of the city of Revere is in any need, please come to 249 Broadway Revere. That's 249R Broadway Revere. It's the rear of the Legion building. We're downstairs. Um, you can call and also make an appointment at 781-286-8119. That will make an appointment, come in, sit down. We can work on any, pro any, any issue you have. Um, I, I greatly appreciate Morris for having me here today. It's a pleasure and an honor, Mark. Thank you, Morris. And um, I appreciate all the service and the men and women of the city of Revere that have uh, given time to our great country. One thing I'd like to say before we close, we mentioned the telephone number that you gave, which I believe was... 781. 286-8119. Can they also email the veteran in Revere? Like if someone wants to send an email, can they do that? They could. They could email M. Silvestri. That's S-I-L-V-E-S-T-R-I at Revere.org. And that comes directly to me, Morris. Okay. That's very good. So, Mark, I want to say thank you for taking the thank time. Thank you. Thank you for it's been taking a pleasure, the time. Always. And to all the people of Revere, thank you for listening. And hope to see you again next time with another great show on the Revere Veteran and Community and bring you up to date on what's going on. Thank you. <laughs>